Do you ever feel stuck, like you're living your life on autopilot? Are you ready to shift into high gear and reach the success you so richly deserve? Welcome to the Play Big Movement podcast. I am your host, Sharon Lecter, entrepreneur, business strategist, and best-selling author. Playing big is not about settling for good enough or being comfortable. It is about reaching your highest potential and achieving your greatest success. Join me in my Play Big Movement as I interview top experts in business, money, and entrepreneurship, all ready to serve you and to help you play big, be number one in your field, live your legacy, and create maximum impact. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. I am Cheryl Lecter, your host, and I'm actually going to bringing a returning guest to this podcast and somebody that is truly a partner in all that I do from a standpoint of communication. So Andrea Jones, thank you so much for being with me today. Ah, thanks for having me on. So Andrea is really an incredible writer, but more importantly, she helps people. She's been in this field for over 30 years, helping solo entrepreneurs all the way to major corporations really identify, solidify, and magnify their specific niche. I just came up with that. I thought that was pretty good. I was going to say, I should get you to write. There you go. I'm learning from the best. I'm learning from Andrea. So I I think it's really important for people to understand. We're so all multitaskers. And so we're trying to be good at all kinds of different things. And what we do is we end up not doing the a level of success that we could if we focused on one niche. So talk a little bit about in your experience, Andrea, um, your your definition of identifying the niche. Um, I, th- I think the, the niche is, it can be very difficult to find in lots of ways, especially if you're trying to do it, I think, on your on your own, because you get so close into it. And I think when I've worked with clients or even working on my own brand, Um, that's actually been, you know, kind of the journey, but to figure out where that comes in is is sort of, if you think of a Venn diagram with, with three circles, the area that you want to be in, there's, there's three different things that you have to work through. So the first thing is what you do really, really well. Um, And I think there has to be a great deal of confidence that goes with that because you need to know, you know, where that area is, but I also think there's an evolution. Um, And I know like we all as business owners go through evolution of the brand and that tends to, it can change and evolve as, as we grow. So it's checking in with us all the time to make sure that we're still on track with the things that we do really, really well as a business um, overall. The second area is what are your competitors doing? I think it's very important to take a look at that. Um, But more importantly is where's the gap? What are they not doing? And then it's where, what does your, what does your client want? And I think a lot of businesses lack on this step is actually going out, talking to the client. What is it that you're missing? What are you doing? What do you like about what you have right now? What do you, can you stand about this particular area or this particular product? Um, And then doing some of that market research. And as those circles, the three of them come together, that little tiny triangle in the center that is your niche. That's the very specific niche that you're that you're going for. So it's a combination of those three things. Well, it's a sweet sauce because it's really um, you use the word gap. I think is really important for us to expand upon that because you know I talk about successful businesses solve a problem or ser- serve a need, and that gap is what is out there that people want that isn't being serviced by someone else where you have the the ability and the talent to be able to serve. So that's that gap that you can step in and truly shine. And I think sometimes it, you, you made the comment, I want to just underline it. Sometimes it's hard to see for ourselves. You really need to bring in the expert to help you identify it. Um, when I start with my mentoring clients, I, one of the first exercises I have them do is isms. What are your isms? because it helps identify the things that you really are passionate about, as well as what people say, oh, that's a Sharonism, right? You know, 
It's not what you do for your paycheck. It's what you do with your paycheck. Assets are sexy. Those isms help you identify what is your unique message. And I think you really help people zero in on that. So talk a little mm -hmm. bit about what you do for people. Yeah, I think that, that was actually one of the, uh, one of a big part of my journey was recognizing um, what my secret sauce was. <laughs> and I realized that connecting the dots is one really big part. So to have somebody talk about their isms, talk about, you know, what they might want to do for a course or for a video or, you know, some bigger, even in terms of their whole brand um, and to be able to go, oh, this, this, and this. So these three things are the core components of what your brand actually does. And it's so interesting, I think, when you talk out loud with somebody, certainly somebody who has experienced, so I think, I know, Sharon, that you've done this for so many people, and it's why, as you do your mentoring with people, it's the first step to talk about and to understand them and understand the brand, is those isms are really your areas of core strength, areas of core competency. But sometimes when you say those things out loud, like your isms, it's such a different way of coming at that um, particular topic and so when you have that then something pops sometimes like somebody can just go oh so you do this I actually remember somebody doing that for me oh so you do this and I was like oh yeah that's exactly what I do and I, I know that you've had exactly the same thing and I think when you have that outside source um, be able to take a look at it from an, a, a non-emotional um, perspective. I think it, it adds so much to it because we get so involved in our brands. We understand our business from a very deep level. And um, if you can't ex describe that really quickly, like I had my m one of my business coaches say to me, um, explaining kills the deal. And if you had to explain what it is that you do beyond a sentence or two, you've already lost somebody. That and is so, so true. Works. Oh my gosh, that's so true. And yeah. that's, I, I love, we've also referenced and you've shared before, you know, when people think about you, Andrea, they, you had the sparkle and the sizzle to the messaging. And so I think it brings in that unique talent of being able to synthesize all the things and bring it down. You know, that's, this, the legacy of creating, of building legacies was kind of like all these things I was doing. And Angela, who everybody knows is, you know, my partner, she literally gave this as a gift at the ranch to me once on a cover of a magazine. It was like all these things I say, yes, but really my goal, my core niche is I help other people build their legacies and so it was really kind of it just hit home and felt so good so yeah it's so wonderful when somebody gets you in that way and then all of a sudden it, it lights up in so many ways I mean I think years of personal development we understand ourselves as we better as we interact with other people same as our businesses as they start to interact with our clients we learn more and more and more about ourselves. Well, when we connect with those people, clients and so on, that they they just so get you um, and you get them. That's really your niche. That's your, your sweet spot. But when you can get that one, like just little sentence that is the whole thing in a nutshell, it's, it's a, such a beautiful thing. It really is. It's just so empowering. So somebody's watching this or listening to it and they go, well, just where do I start? What would be your advice to somebody who's trying to figure out what their niche should be? I think you have to start with you. That is the the, the biggest part. So whether you're a solopreneur, whether it's a larger business, even taking that time again is to really go internally um, and internal to the business and figure out what are the core strengths, what are the core competencies, because all the other two lenses that you're looking through, the, the market gap and what your consumer wants, if you don't understand what you do first and what you do well, you will never be able to articulate it outwards in a way that's going to connect. And so I think that's why we need to understand ourselves, our strengths, um, and what pulls people toward us 
is is the biggest part of it so it's really taking that time to to figure ourselves out and figure our businesses out specifically and like you were saying like serving that need right and what is that and how is it that you do that differently than anybody else so and And owning it (laughs) it it also builds your confidence because you realize you have a unique talent and a unique gift and everybody does everybody watching like you were here put on earth to do something special so the issue is finding your purpose and your purpose helps you identify your niche. And that's, you know, when it's all, when it all comes aligned, it, it, you feel it, you know, mm-hmm. like when I got this, you know, it was like, whoa, that's it. And, you know, cause I could talk about being a business mentor. I could talk about teaching people how to get out of debt, all these things, but it's like, no, this is, this is more feels like the right code of honor, you know? to to identify who I am and what I want to build. So right. I think it's really important. So if somebody is looking, you know, for all of you watching and listening, I, what I didn't add is that Andrea helps me in so many different ways. She helps me with my newsletter, she helps me with my messaging. Um, and she has the ability to write in, in my voice. And that's what she does. She has this unique gift to be able to right in the voice of her client so she can turn into that person while she's writing and so it just is my i've never had anybody that could write as much in my voice as you are other than angela so i think it you know it's it's just a real gift that you have and i just want to thank you for that thank you thank you i love it (laughs) so andrea people wanted to learn more about you would you tell us what your website is so they can find out and how to find you Go over to IamAndreaJones.com. So it's I A M AndreaJones.com. And uh, you can take a look at what's on there. Lots about communication on there too. So, <laughs> so when, when they're when they, you know, we talk about having somebody out, outside looking in, who do you recommend they go to first? Customers or people that know them? Clients? Where, where do they start? Oh, that is such a good question. I think it might be dependent a little bit on where they are in the business. Um, but if you're just starting out um, and are thinking about formulating the business, I would go to friends and family and, and have them, colleagues, so on, give them words that describe them. Because I think that exercise is so eye-opening. And then talk to potential clients um you know uh, about it if you're already a business and you have a business going i would suggest starting maybe with the clients to figure out because they will also tell you um those words but you'll get really excellent feedback uh based on what you're already doing and i think that is there's gold in that for sure yeah and i think you know a good exercise to start with is as i share do your isms things that you know you say a lot But what's even more interesting, asking your family and your friends and your business associates to tell you what they think your isms are. It can be eye opening because it's like, (laughs) oh, I guess I I do say that a lot. So it's a a, a good way to kind of narrow the field of, of what you're passionate about. So I think that's really, really special. So tell me about Andrea Jones. What is it? What what's in your future? What are you looking to do? Oh, for me, it's, you know, like my, my top three values are love, inspiration, and passion. And I think I struggled for a lot of years with what my specific purpose was. And my real purpose is to inspire people and to create that passion in them. And so when I think about my five-year plan, regardless of where that goes, that is a core part of that. And so I get to do that through other brands um, by helping out with people's writings, people's messaging, and so on. I get to do that when I talk about communication specifically and inspire people to to connect with the people that matter most to them, um, whether that's clients or family or friends. And so I think that that's really, really going to be my um, my area of focus, no matter where you know the path leads. So. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, we talk about the niche, but you you take it to the next level and establishing that personal brand. You and I, we worked on, I've got a blog and other things coming out related to personal branding that you can find on my website. But I think it's really important um, 
the the element of consistency speak to that a little bit consistency is everything with your brand everything um because if we think of it in terms of of people we don't trust people who say one thing and do another or if their behavior is different when you show up in one day because you don't know who you're going to get you know if you get somebody who's really nice one day and super volatile the next day um, you're always walking on eggshells. And so there, there cannot be trust there. And so when we think of a business, and particularly if you're under stress in your business, because, um, you know, businesses can have a little bit of stress that come with them. Uh, <laughs> so when there's stress, you want to make sure that no matter what, there's that consistency all the time. So and then consistency on all levels. So if you're going to launch a blog, are you going to do that weekly, bi-weekly, monthly? Stick to it so that your, your clients know what they can expect. And that's the thing with consistency is it builds trust because people know what to expect from you and know what to expect from your brand. So I think that's why when I say consistency is everything, it is such a core foundation. So no matter what you're doing, whether it's how you're showing up, whether it's how you're using your logos um, to make sure that there's consistency in messaging, in all sorts of your branding and marketing and your business, period. And that's um, something that we really focus on. We look at what people are looking for as a kind of a trigger, but then we make sure that my social media, my blogs, my weekly newsletter, that we have consistency that supports that so that the messaging is a, con a continuation. So the, in essence, I want to talk about something however you want to receive it through the newsletter, through a podcast, through social media, um, the messaging is consistent and, you know, being consistent with your brand, there's, uh, you, you may take, you said the word trust. I think that's so important because if you know your niche, you're consistent in who you are, you show up all the time, and no matter where you are, you're the same person. That's how you build trust. And that trust is what gives you the ability to have long-term clients, not just one, one hit wonders. So talk about, do you sell or do you serve? When you serve, you truly are consistent and you're establishing a relationship with your audience. So thank you, Andrea, for being such an incredible talent, supporting me and my brand and supporting everybody watching and listening on the steps that they can take. So I so appreciate you being with me today. And you're going to stay with me for another recording for the private Facebook group. So all of you watching and listening, if you are not a member of the Play Big Movement private Facebook, please join. It's free. And we just go to a little deeper level on talking about these things. And so rewind, re-listen to all this incredible information that Andrea has shared. And Andrea, thank you so much. Thank you. So appreciate it. So all of you watching and listening, thank you so much for being with us on this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. I'm Sharon Lecter, your host. And until next time, have a fantastic day. Thank you for listening to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. Please subscribe to iTunes and leave us a review, as well as join us in other areas of social media, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Sharon Lecter, and for Facebook, author Sharon Lecter. Thank you so much and have a fabulous day.